So that's the early, not the early, the easy part of the training week for me. Uh, 140 for five is basically a rest day with a little bit of a movement in the squat pattern. Uh, you've got a really interesting comment again uh, from one of the fellas. Uh, I'm going to find it now and I'm going to give you my response. Uh, it was from, oh, where is he? Dario Zarba. Dario Zarba. If you're listening to this man, appreciate, uh, appreciate you on the thoughts, definitely. All of the fellas that have been um, giving their opinions on this has definitely made me think, without a doubt. And, uh, you know, I might not be doing exactly what you're talking about, but the thoughts are very much appreciated because it kind of fuels the fire and it challenges me. It challenges my belief systems, uh, my methods. It forces me to find the rationale for what I'm doing. And I think in turn it makes me better. And I think that's what all this should be about, making yourself, you know, better in some shape or form. I think a lot of, a lot of training, there's a lot of variation in training amongst us all. And that's because we're all kind of living a slightly different life with slightly different circumstances. Uh, personalities. I keep saying personalities and that's for a reason because you know uh, minimalistic methods in whatever the field is not for everyone. Uh, there's a certain type of personality that uh, enjoys that and there's a lot of different personalities that you like a lot of variation and like to do lots of different things every day. Um, uh, but Dario Zarba writes this, hello Ivan, I've already commented on this video yesterday but I wanted to recommend uh, re-comment giving my two cents on your progression situation so I can enjoy watching your videos without constantly thinking about it. You're right, you can't progress without adding any weight by simply adding reps. I don't think it's a question about possibility, it's more about practicality. He goes on. A one rep increase with 180 from let's say 12 to 13 is round right about an increase of 6 kg on your 1RM. To add 6 kg on your 1RM takes a long time and it's a pretty big stretch because you are not a newbie anymore. 6 kg are a 3.33% increase. In this case, it would be better to use a weight increment because you can go as low as 0.5 of a kilo per side, which is one kilo total, uh, is a 0.5% increase. This will be more suitable for your training, strength, and progression level. Don't be a slave to a progression model. Just find a progression that works for you, for your level, and the exercises you are using. In my humble opinion, it is a small weight increments. It is small weight increments. Nevertheless, thank you very much for all the work. We appreciate it. And I appreciate you, man. Uh, I've said it already. And I'll keep saying it. I, I, I really do appreciate all the thoughts. Uh, and um, this was a great comment. Very, very good comment. Um, makes a lot, a lot of sense. So if I add another kilo to my 180 journey and I go from 12 to 13 reps, I'm adding six kilos to my one rep max, which is a huge amount. For those of you that have followed me, you know that I've hit a plateau for many different reasons, primarily because of pain, uh, primarily because of my inability to put the work in uh, due to pain the work that is required and we all kind of very very much have an intuition about the work that is required to get better at this game uh, i've kind of known for a long time that i've been tippetoeing a little bit around um because of this fear of getting the pain nobody wants to be in pain i have to go to work i have to live my life this is not my life um, and so tippetoeing around has got me nowhere i've tried lots of different things lots of different angles from it and uh, whenever I got to the real juicy stuff off the work, boom, the pain. And so six kilos added to a one rep max is a huge, huge improvement. And I agree with you. Adding one rep is six kg. That's a lot. Wouldn't it make more sense to work with 0.5 of a kilo or a one kilo? Much more manageable to work with. Um, the reason, the, re, the number one thing that I, that I have to say about that, it makes perfect logical sense what you're saying. 
The trouble with me is, is the daily order regulation aspect to it. How do you order regulate on the fly day to day? Once you put, let's say, 182 and a half kilos on the bar, let's say for, for, for the sake of simplicity, I've got a 1.25 kilo plate. I throw one aside, that's 182.5 kilos. That will be the next progression if I follow the logic that you're talking about. So I put that on and I take that for a ride. And, and then let's say after a, let's say arbitrary uh, length of time, it's time for another increment. So then I go to 185. So then after a little while, you keep stacking on the weight. And then eventually, this has been my experience, eventually you get to a point where the weight is now a fight, a fight bigger than you are ready for on some of those days where you would be happily auto-regulating. Um, when I'm doing these 180 kilo AMRAPs, I'm auto-regulating on the fly, mid-set, like literally live auto-regulation. If at rep eight, I'm like, yeah, shit, man, this is it, man, this is it for me. Or rep nine, and I'm like, okay, that's taking a lot out of me. I just walk back and I rack it. You can't do that when the weight's already on the bar. Uh, the weight's already on the bar and it's fixed. And so then you go for your, you know, uh, weight and reps that, you, that, that you've already set in advance. And you just kind of go with that. Um, the reason why I like the rep scheme is because I can literally go from rep to rep to rep and I'm theoretically putting six kilos and six kilos on, like you're saying, every single rep that I'm doing. It gives me peace, it gives me control, it gives me uh, a, a nice, uh, a different way of looking at it because for a very, very long time, my approach has been exactly what you're talking about, uh, doing that. And then eventually, you always get to a, a dark period of that type of training where you start to really not look forward to training because it's hard to auto regulate unless you start to decrease the weight by 2.5 kilos every single time as well. So there's like a weight progression. Uh, obviously you can make either of those work. You, you can, you can have a wave where you go week to week to week, you're adding a kilo on like you're saying, and then on the fourth week you go back maybe to the second week load, and then it's kind of like a step ladder. You can do that. You can do lots of different things. Um, what you're saying makes sense, and I reckon 99% of the population out there does what you're, you're saying. The trouble with me, and like I've always said it, is, is um, it doesn't attract me as, as much as this, uh, where I forget about the weight, forget about the anxiety of weight, and I just go for reps. And like you said, rep by rep, I'm adding a six kilo increment uh, to my theoretical uh, one rep max. So some days I hit 10, some days I hit nine, some days I hit 11, some days I hit 12. And it's on the fly because I don't know how it's gonna go. And I don't wanna know, you know, what if I come in on a day after a night shift and I have linearly incremented my weight and now I have to fight with something that's, let's say, equivalent to 180 for 12, that type of exertion. Now I have to do that with 185 or 90 or whatever. I don't like the feeling of that. I like the feeling of 180. In my mind, it does not give me anxiety. It does not give me any stress. Uh, it doesn't feel like it crushes me. And I just take it for a ride. Um, and I go as much as my body can go. You could probably do the same thing with, like you're saying, with an added weight. Um, but then how would you do that? And like in my, in my eyes, okay, I would, I would then go for 10 reps. Okay. So I'll go 180, 180, uh, let's say two and a half for 10 reps. Maybe some days that's going to be a very hard challenging thing that I start to fall to eight reps or nine reps or seven reps. And then we start to kind of lose the rep counts as we're adding the weight. And then we get into this predicament of every time I train, I am training in the five, the sixes, and the seventh, and the eighths uh, reps. And I don't think I want to go there at the moment. Um, I want to spend 
a very long time now in the 10 to 20. I want to live in that range now. And I'm just kind of sinking into that range. And my body's starting to feel really, really well. I'm starting to put size on my legs, on my, on my glutes of all places. My lower back is thickening, my mid-back. A lot of uh, good things are happening. Um, if, you, if you listen to somebody like, is it Arthur Jones? Arthur Jones, I think his name is. Arthur Jones, the, the teacher of Mike Menzer, uh, you know, he talked about how uh, Arthur Jones, is it Arthur Jones? Not Martha Jones, Jesus, Arthur. Martha Jones, who is it? Arthur Jones. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> They've got him in Wikipedia as an inventor. This guy here, I don't know if you can see him. Arthur Jones. Uh, he was the founder of uh, Nautilus Inc., a uh, bunch of exercise uh, machines, and he's basically the inventor of what we now know, the, I don't know, HIIT training, high-intensity training, whatever you want to call it. And uh, he taught Mike Menzer, uh, he taught a whole bunch of uh, lifters, and what he used to say, you know, and his, his legacy lives on uh, through these people, um, he died at 80 years old. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Um, he says that the lower body musculature is very inefficient. And that's why there's a lot of fibers. And so you are much better suited uh, to training high repetitions for the lower body and low repetitions for the upper body. Because the, the muscle types are different. Um, this is why when you're doing a set of 20 squats, you feel like you've destroyed every single fiber in your legs. Whereas one, twos, threes, fours, and fives... Yeah, you're doing a whole bunch, but you're not doing as much as 20. And, and that's kind of been my experience. And ultimately, I think that's what uh, dictates all of this to me, is that my previous experience, all my successes, not all of my successes, but a bunch of my successes have come from, come from uh, you know, thinking about high repetitions. I've done even, like I've said, I've done body weight stuff, which has led to me hitting freaking... 31 days of hitting 200 kilos in a row for a single. Uh, that was literally preceded by me doing a whole stack. Like we're talking three, four, 500 reps of bodyweight squats a couple of times a week. And so my experience has been that high reps, there's something special there. And maybe what Arthur Jones was talking about uh, is correct. And that, that's my intuition right now that as I'm doing this, something is happening something very very beneficial is happening i'm adding size my joints are healthy i'm feeling fresh i feel like i'm training and so i, I kind of want to head towards that and i feel like if i start to do what you're mentioning and start to creep in the weights then i start to creep out <laughs> the reps and that doesn't sit well with me i'm not saying that your stuff doesn't work by all means it, it, it works and it's worked for freaking 99 percent of the lifters out there is just where I am right now and the background of the lifting that I've done in recent times I think it's time for me to do something else I've done so long with singles I've done so long with auto regulating singles and trying to go hmm yeah that 200 move a certain way should I go to 205 210 and I just hate thinking about that I hate that conversation with me you know sitting on the bench and thinking about what I should do next I don't like that what I do like is mid set having a conversation with my body live. Okay, do I have another rep in me? I like that a little bit better. Suits me a little bit better. Uh, so I think I fully understand where you're, where you're coming from. Uh, I understand the logic behind it. And I actually quite appreciate the, the whole percentages based explanation that you did. Um, I think it's, it's brilliant. I mean, I, I didn't, I'm not a numbers guy, but I, I didn't realize that every rep added six kilos. I know the calculator is way off, and, I, and, and somebody said the other day, Tom Platts did, what was it, 524 pounds for instead of 23, and there was some controversy around that. But uh, his projected freaking calculator result for one rep max was like 420 kilos, and that's not the case, right? I mean, you would need to be a freaking bear to lift that much. But still, um, the closer you get to one rep, the more accuracy you get. So. Maybe it is six kilos, maybe it isn't six kilos from, for, for me to go from 12 to 13 reps. Uh, but whatever, the point is I want to be live auto-regulating versus fixed premeditated increments, which I've done for a long time. 
even before the squat every day. And it just didn't give me the satisfaction that this gives me. This gives me a weight, which is 180. It doesn't scare the shit out of me before I touch it. So anxiety levels are low. My, uh, my general vibe, I'm not cranky around the house knowing that shit, I gotta go tackle 200 now. 180, you know, I've been doing 180 for one for years. So 180 is like, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. And then mid set, I'm like, okay, do I have another one? Okay, let's do another one. Do I have another one? And it kind of makes me happier training. Anyway, I hope that makes sense to you, man. I hope it makes sense um, what I'm talking about because what you said absolutely makes sense to me. Is just, I guess, two, two different sides of, of the same coin of, of progression. Anyway, appreciate you guys, like always, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.